brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. Today's guest is world record powerlifting champion and now all around bodybuilding overall champion. He does it all. He's the Bo Jackson of the bodybuilding world. Larry Wheels, welcome to the show. Uh, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> you like that little moniker, the Bo Jackson of, uh, of the bodybuilding world? <laughs> that's, that's legit. Oh, yeah. Larry knows, uh, knows everything. 18 <laughs> years old. When you were 18, you had uh, some pretty insane lifts. Um, how did you find out that you were that strong as a teenager? Uh, just being in a hardcore gym and being the strongest guy in that gym told me I had some potential. Um, my workout partners at the time, they all encouraged me to do powerlifting. Um, and after YouTubing it, uh, so I knew right away that's what I wanted to do. I saw my potential. And, um, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. I just saw my potential after realizing I was the strongest guy in the gym at like 18. So, so you're you're a high school guy. You're in. Uh, do you tr do you work out at all in high school, or you just kind of went into the gym after you got out of high school? I actually didn't go to high school. I got my GED. Really? Uh, I lived in the Caribbean when I was 12 to 15, and when I got back to the states, um, I was too old to be in the eighth grade. So I just got my GED and focused on working out. Real. So at, at, after eighth grade, you stopped going to school. Yeah, I stopped going to school in eighth grade. Never went to wow. high school. Wow. And what, what, yeah. what would you do like when all the kids were in school during that time? Well, I was like Goliath and <laughs> like I felt like a babysitter. I mean, I, I, everyone else in my class was 11, 12 years old and I just did not fit in. So after like six months being in the eighth grade at 15 years old, going on 16, oh, like, okay. it was like humiliating. Like, I got to get out of here. He's getting my GD. This is crazy. I see, so they wanted to put you back into like an earlier grade and, and it just it just was you were too mature for those kids. Right. I would have graduated at twenty one. <laughs> oh wow. So you yeah. <laughs> So you kinda did the homeschool thing yourself. No way, no. No Well homeschool. you did the homeschool. You kinda taught yourself at home so you could pass the GED, right? Um well no, I actually went to a program in Harlem at the time for okay. six months and that's how I uh it was a little it was a program to Train for your GD. Gotcha. So at yeah. 15 years old, did you start? Is that when you started working out? Yeah, that's when I started. That's when I joined the gym and started taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. Now, um, were you were you living with your parents at the time? Yeah. Yeah. Were they encouraging my, you? Uh, they were definitely encouraging me. Yeah, they were encouraging me. Yeah, my mom was uh, big, is is and always was a big supporter. Did she say to you, you got to get a real job now that you, uh, you got a high school diploma at 15? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you do at 15? At, at 15, well, I was living off of my mom's allowance. Um, it wasn't until 16 that I started working um, as a server, as a waiter. Okay. At a local. Yeah. And when did, you, when did you start, you know, banging out some crazy lifts, like where people were like, man, you got to compete? Uh, 17. Yeah, when I was 17, that's when I hopped on, and that's when uh, I really started to realize my potential. I mean, I went, I think, from like a 315 bench to 475 wow. between 18 and 17. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, 18 years old, you had a 475 bench, 700 squat, and 700 deadlift. Right. That's insane. Yeah. What are the, what are the, guys, the, the other guys in the gym must have been like, who is this guy? Oh yeah, they they were. I mean, <laughs> they were, but they were also encouraging. They kept telling me I should get on the platform and prove my lifts, and I should just pursue a career in powerlifting, and that's exactly what I did. You know what yeah. the funny thing is? I watch these videos of you, and you don't look like you could lift that much weight because you do. You look like a like a bodybuilder. You look like a classic bodybuilder, actually, and. You get under this bar, and I'm like, "There's no way this guy is going to be able to lift this bar. This thing's going to, this weight's going to crush this guy." And you have no power suit on. You have like these little knee sleeves on. You have no nothing, and you just get under there with virtually no equipment, essentially, aside from a belt, and you lift the weight. I mean, how does that weight move up? Are you amazed yourself that you could lift that much? <laughs> uh, I had a lot of regression at 17, 18, and uh, I was kind of fearless. I, I, this is about a time I haven't gotten hurt yet, and uh, I was just realizing how quickly gains could come when you're doing it right. And yeah, I've always had that deceiving look. Like 
I look a lot weaker than I actually am. I've always had that look. I mean, you're 23 now, so you're still very young. I mean, you, you just set a world record, 810 squat, 610 pound bench, which is basically raw, and 855 deadlift. I mean, that, that, th these are weights that, that real humans, Larry, don't lift, you know. I don't realize <laughs> if you know how crazy that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, the way I see it is there's always someone stronger out there. We've got Eric Lillybridge and Gray Williams, and I'm, chase I'm trying to chase those guys. Do you see yourself, I mean, I know you just competed in your first bodybuilding show this past week and you won the overall out at the uh, Gold's, Cup, uh, Gold's Coast Classic in Redondo Beach, California, uh, proving that you can do bodybuilding and, and at powerlifting. Do you see yourself more as a bodybuilder or as a powerlifter? Uh, I want to say I like both equally because it's just as exciting for me to wake up in the morning and see myself more shredded than the day before and just as it is to uh, put more weight on the bar than I've ever had before. Like, both are... Both, hold on, both to me are equally precious. I don't prefer one over the other. I feel like um, I will never be just a bodybuilder or just a powerlifter, as long as I can help it. Right. Well, yeah. a lot of people felt that Ronnie Coleman could have been a world-class body uh, powerlifter too because he was very strong, but he never really, I think, you know, nurtured that, that aspect of himself. Uh, although he did compete early on in some powerlifting meets, I th you're way stronger than he is. Uh, when uh, has anyone come up to you and said, "Man, we gotta, we want to, you know, groom you to be something somewhere"? Because I mean, I think you could set every record that there ever was in, in, in powerlifting if you really put your mind to it at this point. Um, Gaglion definitely sees it potential in my current powerlifting coach, and um, right now, it's a dream of mine to take the three weight record in sleeves, and I can declare myself a three all-time world record holder in three different weight classes. And I don't think anyone's done that since Ed Cohen. And um, yeah, that's that's next on my list. I mean, on top of that, I'm trying to do nationals later this year. Uh, I'm in no rushing on my pro card because I hear that guys who place well in nationals are usually the most popular guys anyways. And yeah, I'm in no rush. You know, like you said, I'm 23. And I mean, if it takes me three to five years to get my pro card, or even if not, I just enjoy the journey. Right. So. Well, what do you, when you look at yourself from a bodybuilding perspective, what do you think you need to work on? Definitely calves, upper chest, triceps, um, quads. I mean, really everything. I need to add more mass, but calves, triceps, and upper chest the most on top of my presentation. Right. Well, you're, you're also only 23 years old. This was your first bodybuilding show uh, ever. And, uh, you, you know, you would think that, you know, I said this to Akeem Williams years ago when he was coming up. You know, because his legs needed to come up a little bit. And the guy was squatting 700 pounds for like six reps. And, um, you know, everyone's like, how does this guy not have bigger legs? You know, <laughs> he just happens to be very strong. I said, when your body catches up to you, because, you know, a lot of times early on in your career, in your early 20s, your metabolism is very fast. It's hard to put muscle on. As that slows down a little bit, you tend to add more muscle from the ages of 25 to 28. And that's what happened when Akeem hit that age. All of a sudden, his legs just got huge. So um, I think from a bodybuilding perspective, you're really just coming into your own. Okay. Okay, that gives me some hope. <laughs> <laughs> how tall are you? I'm a good, grown boy. <laughs> yeah, how tall are you? Uh, six one. All right, so yeah, plus you're a taller bodybuilder too, so it's going to take you a little longer. Um, what would you like to, uh, what do you see your uh, limit for as far as bench press? Where would you like to get that? I mean, you already got a 610 bench. Do you think you could break the raw record? I think I can. I think if I put on enough body weight, I want to say if I'm weighing around 320, 330, I could do it. Um, yeah, I, I, the, the record stands at 7.38 by someone, Krill Zavitrev, it's Krill, and he weighs nearly 400 pounds. Wow. So, I, yeah, at least I think 3.30 to have a shot at that record. I got a long way to go, maybe win my 30s. Yeah, but I, I think, think I'm capable of doing it. I, I think you'll do it in two years. That's what my prediction. What <laughs> The way you're progressing. What What is your best lift of all the three, the deadlift, the squat, and the, and the, and the, and the bench? Which do you think is your best? Uh, I want to, the bench is definitely my best, and the deadlift's my favorite. Mm -hmm. What do you think? And I know that the deadlift record is ridiculous right now. What is it like, twelve hundred uh, pounds? Jesus, <laughs> that's crazy, right? Yeah, it's uh, mind blowing. Jesus, <laughs> you think you think you got a shot at that one day? Uh, it's hard to say, but I think I do. I mean, as long as I don't get any career-ending injuries, right? I have time on my side, so. The amount of gains I can make in 10 years with the head on my shoulders, I think I can 
close in over on over a thousand, but <laughs> I don't know if I'm willing to be de- uh, as heavy as I would need to be to do something like that. Right, right, right. It, it, it's yeah. pretty imp- it's pretty impressive when you when you think about how much the records have gone up over the last 10, 15 years. It's crazy. Oh yeah, it, it's like you say, like you, they're not humans anymore. <laughs> no, and you right. know what. People think it's drugs, but you know what the truth is? Yeah, drugs help, but let's face it. The, the, the same drugs were around you know, 20 years ago, but the records are way, way, way better nowadays. Well, what do you attribute that to? Is it better training techniques? Absolutely. I think it's training and nutrition. How we've advanced in those two fields, I think, brought us um, much further than the gear did. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Do, do you... What do you think of like you know Louis Simmons at West Coast Barbell? Do you ever like explore any of these other you know powerlifting you know gyms and and subcultures that they have throughout the country? Uh, I, to be honest, I haven't. Um, once I started powerlifting, my first powerlifting coach was John Gaglione, and I've just been doing as he told me to do since I've been with him. I haven't explored any other methods right. yet. Well, uh, it's working. Yeah, you know, but I feel like if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, exactly. It's working for sure. Now, you told me earlier we were talking uh, as far as uh, I said, what do you do for a living? And you said you have a, a website, LarryWheels.co, and uh, you do what training strength programs through there? Exactly. I have like seven different programs on there for building strength, adding muscle, adding strength to your squat bench deadlift, and uh, they're only twenty bucks, so it's affordable for everybody. People who follow me, my fan base, are usually are between like ages seventeen and twenty five, and. Um, I think it's just something everyone can afford and will benefit from. Your your Instagram is very popular. How many followers do you have now? I'm at 234,000. 234,000. Can you believe that that many people are actually following you and what you're doing? Isn't that incredible? I mean, to me it is because when I look at myself, I'm like, I'm just some guy lifting heavy weight with abs. And <laughs> is it that entertaining that 234,000 people you know, are interested in my progression and my story, it's, it's, um, it's overwhelming sometimes. There's like a Larry Wheels like phenomenon. I mean, I, I, you see a single post you put up, it gets 100,000, you know, views or likes. I mean, it's just crazy. What, what do you attribute to? You think it's because of the crazy weights you're lifting or, or, or people are just relating to you well? well I, you know, sometimes I try to figure out why certain people are social media stars. I want to say it's because my age. I think that's what got me snowballing because uh, when you hear these giant lifts, it's usually from guys in their late 20s or 30s. And I think um, people are just impressed that it's someone so young and lean doing it. You know, so, uh, it's the way I look lifting this crazy weight and my age all put together. I think this is a recipe for uh, IG fame. <laughs> You kind of remind me a little bit of like a Cedric McMillan. You have a similar physique to his. Obviously, not as much muscle as him yet, but he, that's how he started too. He started much later than you did too. Do you uh, do you relate to him since you're the same height and have a similar look? I'd say yeah. I'd say our frame, height, and uh, we're like he has those giant biceps or lacking the triceps like I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say we have a very similar physique. I've been told that a few times mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks actually. Yeah. If you could follow in his footsteps in bodybuilding, you'd be in good shape, that's for sure. <laughs> Where do you yeah. get the, uh, the strong mindset? Because I know for powerlifting, and for bodybuilding for that matter, you really need to be able to focus and not lose your train of thought because it's a very mental game at that level as well. Absolutely. And after trying my hand at bodybuilding, I see it's um, just as difficult as uh, trying to avoid temptation uh, when I'm on a strict diet. How do you stay so focused and mentally strong? Uh, I just look forward to the reward and ch- and um, challenging myself. Like it, it's a feeling of euphoria when you you know make a short term goal, you accomplish it. It's like a confidence boost, ego boost, you know. And um, I never like to feel like I'm running in place. I like to make short term goals and accomplish them, and it just keeps me um, hungry and keeps me motivated. But where did you get all that discipline from? Because, you know, it wasn't like you learned it from school because you weren't in school, essentially. So, you know, how do you teach something like that to yourself? You seem very mature for your age. Uh, that's a good question that may take a second for me to think about. Uh, <laughs> Parents? <laughs> Let's see. I want to say it's how bad I want it. 
I want it more than anything in the world, and it's the most valuable thing to me. It's something that I couldn't put a price on, and nothing, and I wouldn't trade anything for it. So I guess it's a combination of passion and um, d- desire, uh, because I'll give up anything to like reach my goals. I'll sacrifice some of my health, you know, or friends or family, or isolate myself from the world to, to achieve the goals I'm trying to um, hit. So. I think it's just like, how bad do you want it? And the more you want it, I feel like the more disciplined you can make yourself. Hmm. Do you think it's also a little bit of a, maybe a fear of failure? I think uh, I I was always afraid to fail. So I I tried so hard because I just didn't want anyone to say, ah, I told you so. Yeah, I mean, there's that too. (laughs) Especially when you have a lot of eyes on you, the last thing you want is to fail. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah, but I I think it's more for me, just how bad I want it, Mm -hmm. you know? That, that's what keeps me disciplined and on track. Yeah. When, when you're in the gym and you're, uh, you know, getting ready to get under like a, a huge, crazy amount of weight, you know, when you're training, not necessarily when you're competing. Because I, look, I, I, when I was in my heyday, I was lifting some heavy weights and it's a, it's a mental game. I mean, to go into that gym and know you're going to get under six, 700 pounds on a squat bar, that's, that's a mental, mentally tough thing to do as well as physically. How do you prepare yourself for that? Are you just like a very laid back guy or are you one of these guys that thinks about it all day long until you get to the gym, until you get under that weight and get it done? Uh, it's addicting. Um, that's, that's what it is. It's not something I can control anymore. I have to lift heavy weight and I have to put more and more weight on the bar. Um, I spend all day and night and occasionally dream about hitting a PR squat bench or deadlift. Um, how do I mentally prepare? I just make sure my recovery is on point. That means nutrition, mobility, um, and visualizing me squatting, benching, and deadlifting, whatever, eight, 900 pounds over and over again in my head. I mean, that's how I prepare. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, the feeling I get when I finally hit that PR is worth um, all the training and all the dieting and all the stretching and bullshit mobility work I got to do to get there. You know, yeah, so I'm chasing that reward. I'm chasing that feeling of uh, adrenaline when I finally hit that weight I've been chasing. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting when you think about, you know, what it means to lift that kind of weight. And I'm sure um, you probably enjoy it a little bit and maybe you're used to it by now. But when you lift that kind of weight in the gym, the whole gym stops. And they come around and they got to watch. I'm sure it happens to you, right? It used to happen to me, I remember. And you're lifting oh, way more. Oh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I live in a community now that's all corporate. And I go to the <laughs> local gym. And every time I finish lifting, there's always at least a couple guys with their phone out or would giving me <laughs> an ovation with a, little cla- a slow clap. <laughs> yeah. Have, have yeah. you gotten kicked out of any gyms because of all the weight you lift? Yeah, for the, for the most part. Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> I mean, Really, I think the average guy is not benching four or five for a warm up. So I think they're like, "Who? Why is this guy doing this in here?" <laughs> well, they don't want you to break the equipment, right? Because I mean, you, you're lifting like six hundred pounds on the bench. I mean, that no one does that. It bends the bars. You know, they get pissed off about that kind of stuff. Right. Well, I haven't gotten any negative response from uh, lifting that much weight. Yeah. Uh, maybe from being there being a shortage of forty five pound plates, but that's about it. Yeah, well, you go into, a, go into a Planet Fitness, and believe me, you'll be kicked out of there in two seconds. You, you won't last for five minutes in that gym. <laughs> I'm going to do that one day, just to get kicked out on camera. <laughs> and you're such a mild-mannered guy. You seem so, like, you know, very low-key. You're not one of these big loud mouths and everything like that. And you look very unassuming. And I'm sure people see you loading up the bar, and they're probably like, what the hell is this guy going to do with all that weight on there? You know, they probably think you're one of these nutcases that, that does these quarter reps or something like that. And then you get under the bar, and you're doing full-range reps with – you know, 700 pounds on the squat. It's just, it, it's, it's an insane amount of weight. And people don't, you know, we ta- <coughs> we're taking it so nonchalantly now, now, but I want people to understand the magnitude of what you do on a daily basis when you work out. Yeah, yeah when you put it that way, it's pretty, it's hard to believe I can pull it off without getting hurt. Um, yeah. That's definitely my biggest fear. But I'm doing my best to prevent that. You know what, though? When I, when I watch Akeem Williams lift, and I watch you lift, there's, there's something that's very similar. You guys don't look like it's hard. In other words, when I got under 700 pounds at one point in my career to squat, I did one or two reps, and I felt like I was going to be d- demolished through the floor. And I weighed 300-plus pounds. 
you're doing these weights and it doesn't look heavy to you and I have to assume it probably doesn't feel that heavy for you because you're that much stronger than the rest of the world. Uh, Would you say that's true? It, it's, it's relative, you know. Um, 700 pounds on my back might feel like 500 pounds on someone else's right. back. That's what it's I mean. definitely relative because I've squatted 700 pounds probably over 100 times by now. So I have a lot of confidence when I'm getting under the bar with 700 pounds. Right. Most guys can't walk back with the bar. It's so heavy. It's because it, that's hard enough to do it alone. You're, you're just, I mean, you, you make it look that simple, which tells me that you have a genetic talent for strength. Um, and, and, you know, but the question I really want to ask you is, you know, you set this world record, okay? I'm sure you watched the Super Bowl this past weekend. You see the accolades that, that these top athletes get in, in football and baseball and hockey and, and basketball. You say to yourself, man, you know what? I wish that what I was doing would be celebrated with the same Bravo, the same TV coverage, the same, you know, financial incentives, so, so to speak, that these other professional athletes get. Does it, does it bother you that, like, you know, you know, when you're doing these meets, that you're in a gym with maybe 100 guys? Uh, hmm. For me, I'm doing what I love, and I'm still making a comfortable living. And any more money that I'm making now would really just be live, to live more luxurious. Right. So I think about how these um, football, you know, these, multi, these athletes who make multi-million dollars, who have multi-million dollar contracts, it's, um, it's relative. I mean, who knows if they're really doing what they love. They may be just be playing ball to support their family or a dying mom or something. And, you know, I'm just doing what I love. And um, the money is just a bonus, like the cherry on top. You know, I would be doing it if I wasn't getting anything at all. You right. know, it wouldn't stop me. It doesn't, it doesn't really motivate me. The money doesn't motivate me. Okay. I mean, that, I, I can relate to that. Did you ever play any other sports? Uh, no, I actually don't know anything about any other sports because I grew up all around woman figures who could care less about sports. So. <laughs> <laughs> you were raised by all women, huh? Exactly. All women. They uh, must be some strong women. I'll give them that much to have you. Oh, yeah. I was a little brat. So, Chris <laughs> Stanford, you know, not trying to throw me out the window. I bet we get some of your relatives under that squat bar. They could probably squat too. They don't even know they can squat that much. They probably could do it. Oh, yeah. I brought my uncle to the gym once. His first day, he benched 315 at like 170. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. 315, no problem at like 170. First day in the gym. That's and then I'm like, dude, you know, you could be even stronger and bigger than me. What's going on? Why not? He's like, eh, I don't care. He just doesn't care. <laughs> that, you make a good point, though, Larry, because that's the most important. One of the most important things about having talent to do something is, is the desire to do it. Because if you don't have that passion inside you, that willingness to sacrifice, you'll never be great at what you do. You can be good, but you'll never be great. You have the, the, the genetic talent and you love what you do, and that's why you're so good at it. Right, that's that combination. You're absolutely right. Well, I want to wish you the best of luck. I know you got a big meet. What coming up? The USA Championships? What in uh, in April? Is that? It's May fifteenth. Yeah, the U.S. Open. It's okay. going to be a big going for the three hundred eight record. Thank you. What's what is the three hundred eight record? It's uh, twenty three sixty nine. What do you think? You, what are you going to have to have? You figured out what you're going to squat, bench, and, and deadlift on that meet? Yeah, I'm going to have to squat 860, bench 640, and pull 885 to take wow. the record. Wow. That's, yeah, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> that's serious. You, I, I, how do you feel You know, now that you're training in the gym? Are you, are you close to it? Uh, I feel I'm close. Yeah, I feel like as long as my recovery is on point, I'm close. I haven't lost any strength during this bodybuilding prep, and uh, I, don't have much, um, I don't have much room. Right. I have a lot of room for improvement. Yeah. Was your powerlifting coach, uh, Gagliard, was he, was he pissed off that you did the bodybuilding show? Oh, not at all. He actually bought a ticket to come see me the minute I told him about it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Like, I got to see this. A powerlifting getting on stage doesn't happen every day. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, so you compete uh, early in the year, and then are you going to go back to bodybuilding at the end of the year? That's right, yeah. I'm, after uh, May 15th, I'm going to jump right into prep for Nationals in November. Oh, so you're going right for the big time then. Yeah, I have to. I mean, everyone's telling me I'm going to get blown away, and I got to get humbled, and I need to fire into my ass. To, yeah, you, don't, you don't lose much. That's true. You, you, you win pretty much everything you do. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going to, you know, get humble. There's going to be 500 guys who are all more shredded and big than me. And <laughs> I'm like, okay, I really need to turn shit to high gear. It's going to motivate me to do my best. It's going to bring have, the best out. Have you ever lost a powerlifting meet? Uh, yeah, I actually got hurt at three different meets and bombed out of one meet. <laughs> oh, okay. So you've tasted, yeah, definitely... you've tasted defeat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, multiple times. I definitely learned the hard way. Well, Larry, you're a terrific talent. Um, I want to wish you the best of luck in the uh, upcoming powerlifting meet. We'll have to get you back after that. And, of course, we'll uh, be following you all year long to see how your nationals prep comes. Uh, you know, good luck. Uh, you know, I, 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 you're a very impressive athlete. Like I said, you are the Bo Jackson of the bodybuilding world. All right, man. You too, Kai. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate all right. It. That's Larry Wheels. Remember that name. You heard it here. Uh, I'm Dave Palumbo. We're just going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. We'll see you next time. Power! <laughs>